Konnichiwa, at senpai desu. If you are a self-taught artist like me, and you like to draw anime art for fun, this video has everything you need from start to finish. Since the advent of internet, we have been overwhelmed with an excess of knowledge. So much that we don't know which ones are useful and which ones are not, making it more confusing. For a simple topic like anatomy, there can be thousands of tutorials available online. So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the one art map that you ever need in your entire life to excel at anime drawing. This map sums up my decade-long experience as a self-taught hobbyist. I hope this video can save you years of unnecessary practice and tears from depression. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. Personally, I divide the art map into four simple stages. Basics, sculpting and modeling, rendering, and detailing. Whether you are a beginner or at an intermediate level, there's something in store for you. Alright, let's delve into the first stage of the art map. Let me ask you Kohais, what's the most fundamental aspect of drawing? Oh, oh, I know, talent. No, the answer is observation. More precisely, hand-eye coordination. You see, observing is easy. But translating what you see onto paper is hard, unless your brain is a printer. So the first step is to accurately draw what you see. The keyword here is accuracy. Now if I ask everyone to draw this Sasuke, I'm sure you can do it, just not accurately. Without accuracy, all the art knowledge you have acquired will only remain as knowledge. That is why hand-eye coordination is more important than art theories. As a beginner, aim for at least 80% accuracy when replicating simple drawings. Start by copying simple cartoons or anime characters, and then progress to quick sketches using real-life photos. The exercises serve various purposes such as training hand-eye coordination, capturing form, contour, lines, and gesture, training accuracy, developing a keen sense of proportion, sensitivity to the curvature and inclination of lines. I've created a detailed video on these exercises. Feel free to check it out. I refer to this stage as sculpting and modeling. Yes, drawing anime art is actually quite similar to 3D modeling. Here's how it works. So the first thing you'll encounter is basic perspective. Your illustration can be one-point perspective, two-point perspective, or three-point perspective. Then, focus on drawing geometries, especially cubes, because they are easier to visualize three-dimensionally due to their six-sided structure. Generally, I prefer using them for the head, chest, and pelvis. Once you are able to use basic geometries such as cubes and spheres to construct a simple body, you can then delve into anatomy. I've created tons of tutorials on anatomy study, so feel free to check them out. After that, your next goal is to be able to draw any character from the panty shot angle. What? Oh, my bad. I, I mean all angles. To do this, you need to practice until you have acquired the ability called mental rotation which allows you to imagine an object from different angles. With this ability, you can mentally rotate the character in different angles, and you won't need references for a particular angle anymore, allowing you to fully materialize the image on your mind onto your canvas. Once this skill is acquired, we move on to our next topic. But before that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Milanote. If you haven't noticed, I'm currently using Milanote right now to create my art map, and it's been a game changer for my productivity. Milanote is not just any planning tool, it's the ultimate platform for organizing thoughts, plans, and creative projects visually. Whether you're a content creator, a designer, or just someone who wants to improve your art, Milanote helps you bring order to the chaos. With Milanote, you can easily create your art improvement plan with just a few clicks. You can map out weekly art sessions, set goals, and even put links to remind you which video tutorial to watch on that day, depending on your learning stage you're currently in. So if you're serious about leveling up your art game, Milanote is the sidekick you need. Now, here's the exciting part. I'm giving you access to my art map for free when you sign up for Milanote through the link in the description. Here's a sneak peek. So if you're interested, click the link below and sign up for Milanote and take your creativity to the next level. After constructing your model, you must add shadows to create a more realistic appearance. In Blender, there's a shading technique called the ambient occlusion method. It's also known as two-tone shading in anime art. Two-tone shading is one of the most fundamental techniques in shading. To do this, you must first understand what's the terminator, and how to distinguish the light part and the shadow part of your geometry. 
Also, understanding various lighting types is important as well, especially direct light because it's commonly used when drawing an anime style. Besides, it's easier to identify the Terminator under direct light than diffuse light. For beginners, I recommend you to start by studying simple two-tone shadows and progress from basic shapes to more complex ones. Also, remember to practice shading with different light source directions. Once you're comfortable with basic shapes, you can advance to human figures. For this, I suggest examining unpainted anime figurines. Don't worry, Senpai. I'll be sure to examine it in detail. No, my dear Kohai. It's to help you understand how shadows change with mass and form. A well-executed two-tone shading can outline the entire silhouette of the character without relying on its line art. After this, you can learn the fundamentals of light and shadow, like mid-tones, cast shadows, etc. I recommend watching Proko's Shading Light and Form Basics. At this point, you should be able to identify the Terminator and apply two-tone shading to outline the entire silhouette of the character without its line art. Besides, you should also be able to implement the knowledge that you've learned from the fundamentals of light and shadow into your two-tone shading base. This includes adding mid-tones, cast shadows, occlusion shadows, and so on. Detailing involves adding texture and color to your model. For this stage, you need to have a good grasp on color theories such as values, hue, saturation, local color, complementary color palette, and much more. I highly recommend you Kuhais to check out Marco Bucci's color notes and color harmony if you want to dive deep into this topic. Up to this point in my self-taught journey, I've realized that no matter how many tricks, theories, or tips I acquired from these videos, I still can execute them while painting. And the results are always... meh. But you know what? This is when copy painting comes into play. Unless you're a very talented artist, you need to study other people's artwork and understand the artist's train of thought when they're painting. Which means you have to make notes, experiment, figure out why they use a particular shade, keep asking questions, absorb all that knowledge, and apply. Richie Norton once said, learning without implementation is arrogance. So make sure you implement them. Now I know your drawing might still look horrible after all that studying, but trust me, the more you study, the better you get. During the copy painting process, you will learn all sorts of techniques like line art, cold warm contrast, brightness contrast, color contrast, composition, visual guidance, storytelling, emotion, and atmosphere. Many people tend to learn these techniques first when they just started drawing, and they think these techniques would help them to improve faster. However, Techniques should be the very last thing to learn. How ironic. And Kowais, that is the last of my Hanwan. Take it. Senpai! <clears throat> Tell me in the comments down below which stage you're in right now. Also, don't forget that you can access my art map for free when you sign up for Miller Note through the link in the description. Feel free to support me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. Please drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter. DM me if you want a commission from me. Alright. That's all from me. Jana Kohais.